This is QB Unfiltered. I'm Coach Keith Simons. It's Workday Wednesday, constructing the quarterback. Tonight, it starts and ends with your feet. Now, I've discussed this in other shows briefly uh, where I talk about the must, M-U-S-T, the must skills that you, the quarterback coach, have to work your quarterbacks on. And um, when we talk about throwing the football, you can't work enough with his feet, weight distribution, and center of gravity in his drop, his platform, and when he strides. Okay, it starts and it ends with the feet. Now, I'm going to go in depth on this because of two games that happened this past weekend and a really unique situation on Saturday, this past Saturday, in the uh, Indianapolis Colts game and then the next day on Sunday in the Cincinnati Bengals game. So um, what happened was uh, you've got the same route being run by both teams where the running back is lined up to the left side of the quarterback, the quarterback's in the shotgun, and the back is going to run a free-release swing-slash-swing-wheel route. Okay, now they ran it differently both teams ran it differently Indianapolis ran it where it was a basically a naked swing to the back you know they were going to him the entire way and the receiver to that side ran some sort of a BS little rub distraction route get in the way of the corner uh, pick play Um, but they were isolating the back and trying to get him out on the perimeter. It was a fourth and one call with about a minute and five seconds to go in the game and, um, huge play. Okay. The, the next day, the Cincinnati game, they're running the same route, but now they've got their outside receiver running a slant route, and it's a read situation for the quarterback where he's key and slant to swing, depending on what that cornerback does on the snap. In both cases, the ball was thrown to the back. And as I said, QBs were in the gun. Back was lined up to the left of the QB, ran the swing wheel uh, to the left. And um, both quarterbacks are right-handed. Cincinnati's uh, Jake Browning and Indianapolis's Gardner Minshew. Same route, same side of the quarterback. Both right-handed quarterbacks, different results. Okay, different results. Minshew threw the ball behind his back to where he had to turn his body to try to make the catch and couldn't do it. Incomplete pass. Indy turned the ball over on downs, and that was the ball game. Browning hits his uh, running back right between the numbers on his chest, and he skates in and scores. Okay, same route, same throw different results and here's why it came down to feet and balance and weight distribution and before we talk about the two quarterbacks and what they did on those throws we have to say that when you're throwing the ball as a quarterback your accuracy isn't determined by your arm it has nothing to do with arm strength okay it has everything to do with your feet your balance your weight distribution, and making sure your hips and shoulders are facing your target when you throw the ball. Okay, feet, weight distribution, balance. And when we talk weight distribution and balance, we're talking about the quarterback having his weight between his feet. 
I always talk to my quarterbacks about not getting your weight outside your frame. Your frame is from your shoulders down along the outside of your legs to the outside of your feet to the ground. That's your frame. You want to keep your weight between your feet and inside your frame. Okay, that's being on balance. You can go back and look at, I would say, just about every high school quarterback in America that throws the ball high, low, wide, whatever, inaccurate. And you're going to find that he was not on balance. His weight distribution was all jacked up when he went to throw the football. Okay, and that kind of bit Gardner Minshew in the ass. And we'll talk about that here in a second. The other big thing is accuracy is totally, totally having your hips and shoulders facing your target when that ball is released. Okay. The thrown ball, football, baseball, any ball that you throw, if your hips are pointed in one direction and you're throwing across your body, you're in trouble accuracy wise. Okay, and here's the other thing. This holds true almost 100%. If you're throwing the football as a quarterback and you're leaning one way or the other, which means now your weight is outside of your frame, the direction that you're leaning, that ball has a tendency to go in that direction. So instead of having your shoulders and your hips directing that energy, at your throw, you may be going one way and throwing the ball and pulling it with you as you slightly dip one way or the other. It happens all the time, and it happened this last weekend in the NFL. Okay, let's take a look at uh, Minchu. Now, I was a little amazed when I saw this clip because he played for the pirate Mike Leach at Washington State University and um, you know the air raid and Leach and his quarterbacks they're all about uh, great feet balance getting the throw out of their hand on time not having wasted motion not being sloppy and so when um, I saw his drop before he threw the ball, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. He was in trouble as soon as he started to drop. Uh, so the first thing is, and, you know, there's there's two schools of thought on this. When you're in the gun as a quarterback, how you have your feet in your stance. Uh, I'm, in the, um, I'm in the camp, and I've always – coach my quarterbacks to do this. If they're right-handed quarterbacks, their left foot is going to be back. Okay. So that's the, that's the foot that they pivot on when they get the snap. And then they take that first step with their right foot. Minchu though was doing it the other way. So he's lined up uh, in his stance before he gets the snap with his right foot back. Now, The reason I don't teach it that way is I think that it adds an uh, extra step to the equation when you're doing your drop as a quarterback. Plus, going the other way um, where you have your um, left foot back, right foot up, just in your stance, you're getting more depth on your drop, which is crucial when you're trying to get separation you know, from the bad guys up front, line of scrimmage, your offensive line, the D line, just by having your feet staggered with your left foot back, you're gaining almost a yard's depth on your first step just by what you do with your feet and your stance. Anyway, that's a that's a clinic talk for another day. So I was surprised to see uh, Minshew's feet the way that he had them. But what he did on the snap was what really amazed me. He caught the snap now. And he started hopping back. And as soon as he started hopping back, his uh, weight distribution and center of gravity got on his back foot going back. And he was in trouble. 
Okay, so when he tried to um, throw the ball, his momentum was going back, and when he when he hit his plant foot with his right foot, and then instead of striding like this, so his hips are facing the running back, he hit that plant foot, and because his momentum was going back, his left foot swung around like to the sideline, and when he threw the ball, he faded in that direction. And where did the throw go? It went exactly in that direction. Okay, when he released that ball, his hips were behind the back, and the ball went behind the back. And that was all because of what he did with his drop when he initially caught the snap. Instead of having clean feet and a clean platform, he had a sloppy drop in his weight distribution and center of gravity got him in trouble right away, and the ball went exactly where it should have gone. Okay, and with running backs now, doesn't matter if, whether you're Marshall Falk, you know, one of the greatest receiving backs in the history of the NFL. Running backs are not receivers, even if they've got great hands. They're not, that's, it's not their game and their skill set to be making great, fantastic catches. So as a quarterback, you want to make it easy on your back. And because the back had to turn now, because the ball's thrown behind him, he wasn't able to uh, make the catch. Now, here's the other thing. And this is like a, uh, a scheme thing. And, you know, the, the, the coaches for Indianapolis, they know what they're doing. But if you're running a naked swing like they ran, you know, an isolation swing to your back, as soon as he releases on that free release, he's got that inside linebacker out leveraged. You've got a corner out there with the receiver. You block the corner with the receiver. Just get the snap and stand up and throw the ball to the back. I think it was uh, uh, they had really short yardage to go, like fourth and one, fourth and two, something like that, fourth and three at the most. When the back dropped the ball, he had the first down. Um, why not just stand up, get your feet underneath you, get the ball to him right now, let him stay wide, you know, stay wide out, you know, outrun that, uh, inside linebacker and then play off of the, the block of his outside receiver. But they put the drop on it, sloppy drop, uh, falling away from the throw and the throw went behind the back. So, um, that should have been an easy first down. It was an incompletion, and Indianapolis' season was uh, effectively over. Now, we go the next day to the Cincinnati game, and this was early in the game, but it was a touchdown pass. The same route by the running back, but Browning now takes a three-step drop. Okay, and he takes a clean three-step drop. All right, and his last two steps put him on that platform to where he can hit that plant foot, stride and throw. And when he strides to throw to the back, his hips and shoulders are facing his running back, okay? And his weight is between his feet, and the ball goes straight and true and hits the back right between the two numbers on his chest. Easy catch, easy touchdown, all right? stark difference between the mechanics and the technique of both quarterbacks led to two stark different results. And it didn't have to happen that way for the Colts. So, um, you know, you can do all of these drills that you need to do with your quarterbacks, but it starts and ends with the feet. If the feet aren't right and it starts on the first step after receiving the snap, if your feet aren't right as a quarterback and you add to that your weight distribution is all jacked up, you're in trouble because what happens with those two is if your feet are sloppy and screwed up and your weight distribution is bad, what you have to do at the end of your drop is you've got to stop 
readjust your weight, rock back up, possibly slide that front foot back so that you got your feet underneath your shoulders for your platform and then stride and throw. Well, that's all wasted motion and the ball's getting out of your hand way too late. And that's the difference between uh, receivers or backs getting hit right when the ball gets to them, knocked down, okay, incomplete pass, or the difference on the guy catching the ball out in space and able to get yards, okay? And that starts, that really starts with um, your first step. And uh, so the drills that you do as a quarterback coach, you got to work these, those things every day, every day in practice, every day in the off season. And it's muscle memory, muscle memory, muscle memory. Okay. And the ball is going to go where your feet and shoulders are facing. Okay. So um, I see a lot of young quarterbacks now trying to emulate Patrick Mahomes and to a lesser extent, Aaron Rodgers. And Rodgers is um, the lesser of two evils. Mahomes will really screw you up if you are trying to pattern your game after him. Let Rodgers and Mahomes be the two gifted physical uh, freaks that they are playing quarterback. They are gifted. You're not Mahomes and you're not Rodgers, okay? They can do things that most of us can't do with our feet, our weight distribution, our arm slot, any of that stuff. If you want to emulate a quarterback, Google uh, all of Tom Brady's highlights and pattern your game after him. Tom Brady's the most, I think, the most uh, technical, mechanically sound quarterback that I've seen. And he does everything right. He does it the way that that I believe in. Um, He's just great fundamentals in throwing the football. And obviously, his fundamentals and his mechanics pay great dividends. And he works his ass off on those fundamentals and mechanics. Okay. And, uh, like any great quarterback, uh, your QBs have got to do the same thing, the right thing day after day, after day, after day, it becomes muscle memory so that when they get into games, they don't have to think about it. They just do it, which, you know, that's again, that's a kind of a head scratcher on what Minshew was doing the other day with his feet. And I know he didn't do that in college. He didn't do that in college. And he didn't have any pressure either. This wasn't a situation where he was throw, forced to throw the ball falling away because he had someone in his face. That did not happen. That was truly a result of sloppy mechanics. It got him in trouble big time. Okay, so solid mechanics with your quarterback, those are the building blocks for successful quarterbacks. And it starts and ends with your feet. Okay, this has been uh, constructing the quarterback, QB unfiltered. And remember, always throw the ball short to guys who can score. See ya.